uh, there's freedom, a sense of freedom when you recognize this non-duality, right? Yeah. I. It depends what awakening you're having, because there's different awakenings that you can have. You can see that there's a consciousness looking, or that there's nothing looking, or that life looking, but there's not, and that will be a profound shift. But that might not be the energetic expansion. And so therefore, you're still, as a person, you still feel the same. You still feel like there's a located person that's looking out through the eyes. But yet there's a knowing of that nothingness. And that does have an effect. It does really profoundly change things, that waking up. But you still feel like a location. And then there's the other one that happens where it's like a forward energy, where it's like, there stops being the looking from a location and then there's this energetic movement back into things. That's quite hard to describe that one. It's easier to describe the nothingness. It's normally <laughs> the nothingness happens first and then the, the energetic movement one happens. And that one feels like love when it happens. Yeah. I can really sense the, uh, the body-mind yeah. Want to go for that, of course. Yeah. But I also get really this good sense from non-duality, and well, that means you and I are the same, <laughs> and everybody in the chat, right? Yeah, everybody. It is. Yeah, everybody and <laughs> <in> everything. <laughs> Last night, it it hit me so, so good, so hard. Um. And I really was, oh my God, this is it. But the conditioning of the body-mind, now I'm a little bit more back in, in, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can even find that it comes so strongly, the, the contraction, that you completely forget that boundlessness or that, 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 that this isn't um, individuals looking, it is one energy looking so it can even come so strongly that sense of being a person that you can't really remember it like it fogs it completely it's amazing it's amazing how um convincing the dream is of being something separate mm -hmm. and when it comes even after there's been these strong awakenings it can come back that fog of being separate yeah it does, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess we don't want to get rid of the dream. We like the dream, right? Yeah, to an extent. But it, yeah, that depends on, on how your life is. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's very important to have uh, virtues and um, to make your life work, because else it's only suffering yeah. you can be an awake yeah. person and suffer only huh? and you gotta remember that there's only five percent of the world that are in wealth that you know 95 mm -hmm. percent of humans are actually really struggling for survival and everybody in the like england holland no matter how poor you are or how bad your life is in wealth isn't it crazy like it's it's so and we just don't see that we only see wealth us westerners and we only see we normally see ourselves as poor in the other world. Greedy as well. Uh. But it's only what you're compar in comparison to. So we're in a richer society, so then our expectations are higher. It's all about comparison. The separate self, everything, the whole of suffering is about comparison. I am this, you are that. I am rich, you are poor. You have more than me, I have less than you. And none of it's true, really. If you step aside and then there's the seeing that you are that boundless energy, then there's nobody that's got more or less. The body's always going to be greedy, though. Even yeah. when that movement happens, the body will still want the biggest piece of the cake or the nicest pizza <laughs> or the nicer Absolutely. apartment. It's not going to be like, oh, I'll take the worst apartment. <laughs> it possibly is. <laughs> but it's So the body has that movement. But, the, but there is this other thing which is inclusive of everything. And it's really something that you can't speak about what happens, this movement of energy from being 
contracted and the contraction looking to an expandedness and to other people you won't they won't even notice difference because on a human level you know you still want the nicer apartment you still want the bigger piece of cake you still have arguments or you can still get grumpy or bad mooded or pissed off or shy or embarrassed or all these things so on the human level they might not notice but it's no longer happening to someone so all these human dynamics don't belong to anyone it anymore feels like it's happening to someone i experience it like happening to someone that's a dream right yeah no? yeah totally that's the dream it's not really happening to you because who is that someone it's happening to so who is that person that it's happening to you mean the body mind yeah so who's awakening happening to well you said it seems like it's happening to a person who is that person it's happening to that is the body mind. It is like the body mind recognizes recognizes what's really going on. Yeah. That consciousness is but, only that. So what what is the body mind? Can the body mind actually recognize anything? Yes, I do believe so. Well, if we call it consciousness, which I have a tendency mm -hmm. not to call it consciousness, but if we call it consciousness. So there is this knowing, this consciousness of everything. So there is something that recognizes everything, which is beyond the body-mind mechanism. So then what yeah. is the body-mind mechanism? And the body-mind mechanism, in my description, would be something which produces thoughts and feelings, but it doesn't actually recognize anything. But that body-mind mechanism is always being updated by those thoughts and feelings. So today it might yeah. recognize that... Um, that that's what it is. I, admit, I believe... There are different thoughts and feelings yeah. now producing in the body yeah. mind. Yeah, but that doesn't actually, that's not actually somebody's experience. So it's not actually somebody that's having that experience. It's that the body mind mechanism is remembering the last moment and then this moment, putting it together in a current dream of itself. But that is like a film playing. Mm -hmm. What's actually recognizing that is beyond that. The body-mind mechanism never ro recognizes a thing. If there wasn't consciousness, then it would be like a film playing in a cinema and nobody was sitting watching it. I I, I'm sorry, I don't follow. Yeah, okay. So, um, so what, What's your question? Because you say, uh, what's the body-mind? Mm -hmm. so, so you said it, feel, it feels like somebody's having an awakening. It feels like it's happening to someone. And who is that someone? Well, that's, that is the body-mind. It's not a someone. It's, it's a mechanism. Yeah. It's the mechanism who realizes or uh, produces different um, uh, patterns. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, uh, before it was a pattern of, oh, I'm a person. Yeah, and, yeah. And how, how the patterns are you do it, your consciousness, man. Yeah. You still need to get your life in order. Yeah. But you are a bit different than you thought you were. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's now happening in the body-mind mechanism. And that's really yes. beautiful. And that's the side effect. And what that does is that over the years will profoundly change the body-mind mechanism. And it will always update it and be changing mm -hmm. that body-mind mechanism. But it's not that body-mind mechanism that wakes up. Because there's nobody inside the body-mind mechanism to wake up. It, that body mind mechanism appears in consciousness and it's a mm -hmm, movement back to that consciousness or to that boundlessness. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually happen to someone. It's just the boundless energy seems to go through mm -hmm. a filter of someone. So say this is the someone, mm -hmm. this is the boundless energy. And then it kind of goes through it and makes it feel like it's a small person and it comes out like a small person. But it's actually everywhere. The boundless energy is everywhere. And it just yeah. is a movement back to that boundless energy. So right now, what's looking at me, you're 100% free. What's looking at me and what's having an experience is that boundless energy. So now that which hears me is an endlessness, is eternity. That which sees me is eternity, which is so beautiful. But it looks through that particular instrument. And that particular instrument is a never-ending like um, vehicle for this so the 
the particular instrument in which it's looking through and which the change is happening is always going to be updating and changing that instrument. So it'll be changing your ideas, it'll be changing the way you see non-duality, it'll be changing your likes, your preference, your traumas, all of these things, but it will never come to an end. You'll never come to a particular way in which you see non-duality. You'll never come to a destination of being the most enlightened body-mind mechanism. The body-mind mechanism is something that's always being updating did and evolved mm -hmm. but that wasn't the part that awoke what awoke was consciousness or boundlessness or beingness and then that has a profound effect on the instrument that it's looking through but that instrument is always going to be changing so you will change so in 10 years time even if you have a profound awakening now in 10 years time you'll understand and see as a body mind mechanism non-duality in a completely different way if you didn't, then you will, um, then, you know, it would be like a, it wouldn't be a true awakening because the body is always meant to be evolving and changing. So your ideas yeah. about non-duality should always be changing. Your ideas about life should always be changing. Your ideas right. about everything should always be growing and evolving. And there shouldn't ever be trying to cap onto that. The only reason we try and cap onto it is because we're trying to, as a separate person, live in security. But, but this has nothing to do with the intellect or to I, about ideas of non-duality. It's about that stillness, which is always present. The stillness which hears me, looks at me, moves that mouth to smile now, <laughs> which is so beautiful. Yeah. And that's not that's, intellectual. That's when, it, when it resonates with me, when, yeah. when you point that out. In yeah, that. it's so beautiful because it's nothing to it's... do with what you think or feel. It's there. Oh. It's there. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, now I'm getting it, but I'm uh, flipping so uh, fast back and forward. Yeah, that's what happens. What that's what happens. Yeah, and it and can sometimes drive the instrument a little bit crazy because it does have an uh, effect on the It is already crazy. So. <laughs> oh, that's a great realization. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're all crazy. Lisa's totally crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's no, no, no way fixing it yeah. whatsoever. So that's, that, that's okay. <laughs> I have I have an obsession with buying bones. This is the craziness of Lisa. I've got a tiny little freezer and I feed my dog raw bones. bones. Yeah, this is oh. my craziness, like raw meat. And I have an mm -hmm. obsession with buying it. And every Sunday we have a market in town that gives away free bones and I get like really into getting the free bones. So eventually I can't put any of my food in the freezer because it's all dog bones. This is my, and, the, and then I have loads in the fridge. I open it, I'm like, she's crazy. <laughs> What are you buying, yeah, bones? Yeah, I don't even yeah, eat yeah. meat, but I like buying bones. <laughs> We're all totally crazy and got our little quirks and... There's nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that, that's... No, that's not true. Doing well, happens. Yeah, no, because there are, there are things uh, to do. Um, like collect uh, bones. For example. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, Sunday, very important. I'm like out there looking to see where the bones are. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so. <laughs> I was all, I was in my mind that all some serious things you have to do as a human being. And you, nah, you, just, you just collect bones. <laughs> yeah. But. A doing is always happening. It's it's just seeing that the you that you thought did isn't the doer. So that energy that feels like you are in behind the eyes and you're making a choice to do something isn't mm -hmm. actually a separate entity. It's a functioning appearing in a boundless freedom. And that, it, that still it, carries it is, on. I still have that, that, di that dilemma, you know. I go to the store where it sells the bones and I see the small bones, the big bones, and they want to give me these bones and I'm trying to barter. So I still have that one that's like, no, say this, say that. No, oh, you said it wrong. But that doesn't mm. equal an entity. No, no, it, it, it's... It's a functioning. You can say, it's a functioning. It's a mechanism, yeah. this, this body. And that, and that functioning always has to play like that and it has to update itself. So if, um, you know, you learn that, you learn that, um, say... So say with your neighbor, you learn that if you make noise after 10 o'clock, that they mm. shout at you. So now every time yeah. it comes to 10 o'clock, you tell yourself, oh, I shouldn't make noise. 
And that's not that you, so that seems like there's somebody doing, but that doesn't actually belong to someone. But that's a really important functioning of being a human. That input comes and goes, oh, 10 o'clock, I shouldn't make noise. But the problem mm -hmm. is, is we feel that that's a separate entity living inside our head rather than a functioning. It's a really important functioning of this instrument, the ability to decipher between one action and another. Khaleesi doesn't have it, and she does really stupid things. Mm -hmm. But, like, but yeah. we have that ability, but that doesn't imply that we're separate. <laughs> That's the problem, is it that we think it makes us separate. I'm going to choose orange juice over apple juice, therefore I have free will and I'm separate from the orange juice, I'm separate from the universe. But actually it's a machine that's evolving and updating. And, and anything that appears in this world, so any thought, any choice, anything, cannot be the ultimate source of all things. And so where do these choices appear from? And then when it's explored, it's seen that there is no place, there's no person, there is nothing it appears from. It spontaneously explodes into existence. And then when it explodes into existence, it comes with this profound sense of being, of amnes. And that's the freedom, is going back to that rather than living in this identity which lives in time. <laughs> It, it is so weird because <laughs> that I, I constantly object to you, but you're saying, I think, no, 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 there is a choice. And then one second it clicks with me. Yeah. And, and, that, and then I, I agree, I totally agree. No, yeah. no, you, you get, there is no choice. choice or no but there's difference. an appearance of choice. And this is where the mind keeps getting stuck. Because if I said to mm -hmm. you now, um, can you take your earphones out? It would seem like the thought comes up okay, take your earphones out, and then you do. But that mm -hmm. location of the you isn't actually you. So that location of the one that says, okay, I'm choosing to take, and it normally feels like you're in the head somewhere. This isn't actually something so much bigger to people is that, that people use that to, to, to validate their helplessness and to validate their powerlessness. And as a person, you should feel empowered like you can choose. Mm -hmm. Like you can choose to leave someone, you can choose to get a job. Whether or not that will happen, none of us know, but it's not ultimately a separate person, but the body feels like it can choose. So now if I had a, um, if I had, you know, a massive debt, or something, I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of a difficult problem, a massive debt, I could take action in order to yeah. change that. But it's not mm -hmm. my action, but by me, by this body having the information, you can take action to change mm -hmm. that and you can go to this person, mm -hmm. then it will more than likely happen. Just like if you update Siri with information. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I mean. You, yeah. have to, you have to kind of program yeah. the, the body mind. But there's to nobody make, make in... The right decisions, but that right? it doesn't, yeah, precisely, but... That doesn't belong to someone. There's no one behind choice. That's the beauty of it. Because those choices, so when I say, oh, I've got a debt that I've got to clear or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, or I, need, I have a debt that I need help with. And then you look through these different objects, uh, objects, options. That mm -hmm. on the bodily form, it feels like there is choice. So you can choose to go with this person or that person. But it's the, the, the freedom is seeing that that choice maker doesn't equal a separate entity and it doesn't equal you. Who you really are is not found in this world, but yet is everything. And that's the love. It's like prior to the human's mistakes. But then at the same time, it's all of them because it's everything and nothing. And this is the problem is that we get lost in that small, narrow world of believing we're the person that makes choices. And then we get this whole entity that goes into time that feels guilty mm -hmm. about its choices. It blames for its choices and it lives in a very narrow, contracted world. And that person's got to carry on functioning with all its problems and all its dramas and all its past history and karma. But that's not you. And this is the waking up. And this is the freedom seeing that that's not you. Mm. So beautiful. Who you are is something that never is born, never dies, and is never found in a thing, a feeling, a choice. 
I believe that. And, and I think that but, you know it more than believe it. I think it's like you can taste it. Yes, I, I think so too. But the body-mind... Uh, it's so conditioned uh, to believe it's a separate entity that... Yeah, but it, it, yeah. it cannot... Or the, the, the problem is, or the, uh, the danger is, that the body-mind thinks it is God mm. and it's unlimited and it yeah. has no choice. Yeah. And then it's... The, uh, yeah, and it just Shit normally yeah on. yeah, and it normally goes through phases of that, and it depends if you're a really positive person, then more than likely mm-hmm. you'll be like I am God, and if you're a really like high confidence <laughs> person, you'll be on the positive side of it, and you'll be like I am God, I am Jesus Christ, come into manifestation. Yes. And if you're a really negative person, then you'll take it on to validate your helplessness, so you'll take yeah. it on to feel powerless, and you'll be like. I am God and there's nothing I can do. My life is fucked, so I've got to... My yeah, life. that's not true. And it's not true. So you'll take it on. So you see mm-hmm. these sometimes these teachers, and I'm not going to name any of them because like, there's so, you can't get a bad teacher. Life is the teacher. But um, you see these teachers that kind of like embody it as if they are gods, like they've taken it on on the personal level. Or maybe they're just starting to be a teacher or they're blogging in these like, um, Facebook groups or something. And they take it on and they really feel like they are God. And that's a beautiful expression, but it comes with this arrogance and this pride and this superiority. And then you get the other ones that are following them often, feeling like they're powerless and that they can't make choices and they can't do something. And neither is true. Both of them are taken onto the person. The person cannot be liberated. The person is always crazy. And he's yeah. always got the ability to evolve more and deeper to this. And that's really important that whoever you're listening to as a speaker recognizes that, that they're never stuck. Like Lisa can always improve her karmas and her issues and her always. There's always an opportunity to go deeper into where she gets stuck or where old karmas come up or old thought patterns. And there's loads of teachers out there that can embrace that now, but it's also hard to be the speaker and to also say, you know, I can get angry, I can get sad about things, because people have this expectation or need to see you as God. Yeah, but that's not... That's not it either, but at the same real, time... That's not true. It's not true at all, but it's, it's a hard one when you're at, at the front, because it's, it's, mm. you know, it's oh, got yeah. so many different dynamics yeah. being people, the speaker People will front. judge you uh, yeah. because of that. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just... Um, you're, it's also confusing as to people can't, people want to look at enlightenment as a final place and it's never a final place in the human form. There's a final place as that stillness which is beyond the human form, mm-hmm. but as the human form, I mean, we've always got the potential to evolve, always. Yeah. That's what life is, is growth and destruction, growth and destruction. I, I, I agree. It's always order, order and chaos. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there is um, the realization of, of being uh, consciousness. Yeah. Is, is, how do you experience it? Because you, you know Lisa, the, the bone collector. Yeah. Crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, a conscious of a part of you, a knowing, a hintergedanke. Yeah. Um, um, it's, not, it's not so much the personality knows it. What happened was when I was in Bali, um, mm-hmm. there had been many awakenings before, many intellectual awakenings and many energetical awakenings. And what happened was, it was like, there is this stillness that's always looking. And when mm-hmm. you're identified, it's like, there's only attention in the movement there's only attention in you and what's happening but there's always this stillness which is experiencing itself and what happened was the energy shifted back to that and it was like an energetic thing not an intellectual thing and it just felt like my center became still and non-located and my sense of being so my sense of being inside this body sort of kind of went into everything it didn't feel located and it's in one way it was dramatic and in one way not and then since then so that was like seven years ago now since then it's been a process of lisa becoming more and more balanced but she's still screwed up she still has to go through her issues 
like mm-hmm. she's still yeah they never go away you know? yeah and like you always uh, always improve or yeah always have to yeah do and work yeah and so for the last seven years it felt like that energetic movement has been sort of settling down and changing a lot of ways of her being um through life through meeting people through expressing this it's kind of changed a lot of things in her personality but it felt like from that moment on there was never being a lost anymore like the, it just felt like my essence no longer was lost in the movement it no longer got lost in moving even though the mm-hmm. movement was still happening it kind of mm-hmm. came back to center and and it's really hard to describe but you know what i'm talking about it's just that your attention I keeps going so. yeah. it keeps going back into movement every so often and when you go back into the movement you feel totally identified and uh, in the person yeah but i also think or am i just making it up and identifying with yeah consciousness but i wouldn't even give that thought that line of thinking too much like no because I wouldn't that's be- a, I sh- see there's a thought as well yeah and then I, I would go, okay, just, I can see the thought yeah just keep exploring sensation what happens listen to non-duality and let it kind of do its thing but don't be arrogant to think that you're done just be open to always looking at to, at what's happening if you see what I mean yeah. but and so listening yeah, being open to experience but I wouldn't get caught up in too much of the thinking of am I dumb or am I not because you know even if you like it just is irrelevant it's an irrelevant thought and it's it's normally coming when you feel that energy of seeking or when you feel out of balance when you don't feel lost in a story then you don't question whether or not it's happened or not happened just keep being honest to the experience this is sweet yes yes that's that's the most important thing i mm. discovered being honest yeah <laughs> so Absolutely. important and don't suppress your, my feelings or yeah. yeah uh but it's tempting because you uh, you can suppress them and you can book yeah. and then yeah. go along with it but yeah. it bites you so hard in the back yeah. uh, that's the beauty of life is it doesn't let you get away with it no <laughs> <laughs> i wish it did <laughs> but it but it doesn't <laughs> for a little bit Yeah, for sure. Nice. Ah. <laughs> That's so nice to talk with you. Yeah, 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 it was good uh, to speak with you last time. That's what I thought because you you ended from that I don't care about any body's enlightenment. I need to eat now. <laughs> because there you need to take care of the body, the body mind. This yeah, is how I ended for... the last session. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I I recognize it because you need to have things in order yeah. before you can yeah. think about these things. Yeah. And I, I believe I think. I and also, know. I have a greedy personality, so I like my food. I can't eat that much of it because I've got a small body, but I like my food. So by the time at eight o'clock in the evening when I finish, I'm like, food. <laughs> I need to have it now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> Uh, very well. Oh, nice speaking with you. Thank you very much. It was uh, very nice speaking. Uh, we haven't spoken you. before, have we? Have we written to each other? I recognize no? your lo- your name. We've never written to each other? I tried to call you last time. Last time. And you told me. This time. Yeah, last time and I think the, the time before. But I wrote to you like two months ago. Ah, okay. Very, very short, but... Uh, mm. Yeah, it's good. I love your live streams and uh <laughs> nice. Yeah, and you seem to be resonating with it. I can see this joy that's not personal. Yeah. Oh, thank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. What is it? You have got to be honest because or else you get you get nothing so. Yeah. Nice. See, thanks Lawrence. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice evening. <laughs> Bye. Oh, that was a sweet conversation.